basically the plan was to get control of a village from where Katyusha bombing was, were shot over to the northern part of Israel. The activity was supposed to, we were supposed to expose a tunnel uh, inside Gaza. I was in Kiryat Shmona to report on the effect that the hundreds of Katyushas were having on the people of this small community. The day I was there, more than 150 bombs fell on this little town. One exploded near me, and I got hit. Before you get into Lebanon, uh, we, we had some kind of a ritual. Everybody was giving their cell phones, putting in a big box. The sarcasm there was like, at the end we'll see who was the one that didn't come back to take his phone. There's a lot of chaos around there. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of shooting going on. You're talking about heavy artillery and, and rifle and a lot of noise. We got under fire. You see the shells that are falling. There was a lot of mayhem around us. Tanks were shooting, helicopters were shooting. A lot, a lot of noise. While we were on our way, we stayed in a village. Anti-tank missile hit the door, and that all blew up into shrapnels. And in the first, uh, the first missile that hit, there were five soldiers which were killed. Four minutes later, a second uh, missile hit, and altogether nine soldiers were killed. He opened the door and, and, and I stood up and I looked down at my right arm and I saw that it was almost completely detached. The rocket exploded next to me. I found myself lying in the street, a few meters away from the place I was standing. I started screaming from fear. I was in pain. I could not feel my right arm. I could not see or hear. My mind and soul were in prison in blackness. So I screamed louder, feeling only the deep loss of my life and everything I stood for. Then I began to see faded light. They operated mortars on, on us, and one of them hit me. And I got uh, shrapnel in my uh, foot. I checked my leg and I, s I uh, felt like blood is pouring out. And um, my leg felt like concrete, and uh, it, it didn't feel like a part of me. They shot at us some kind of uh, artillery, and uh, some guys of, from my unit were injured, we ran out. This one guy had a very nasty, almost amputated leg. The wounds of war are valiant. The body heals, but the violence of war and terror does not bring peace to the soul. Wars and bad things like that, in wars and even in the hospital, especially wars, it blackened, blackens the soul. Um, it's not everyday, for me, it's not the everyday thinking or it doesn't bother me in the everyday's life, but it's there. Um, sometimes it floats. Trauma in Latin is wound. But we use the term to describe a state that the wound doesn't heal. That's what is trauma all about. When we feel threat, our body, our neurological system get the alarm and it reacts. 
if we cannot do anything and uh, and the system doesn't shut down we stay alarmed and in danger even if we are 30 years later and the danger the war was finished It's an existential fear. And once you feel it, you're afraid it will come back. Such an event shakes your world and you're afraid to feel it again. The envelope of security that surrounds you and allows you your daily routine, this envelope is torn after such an event. Yeah, well, when you're young, like you say, and you're healthy, then a lot of your confidence comes from your knowledge that tomorrow morning you can stand up, walk, run. It's a lot of what you are. And suddenly that's taken away, so it hits you hard. The first time I experienced PTSD was a few weeks after the event, and it came as a flashback. It took me back to that place in Kiryat Shmona, and I felt the same feelings again. It was a very strong flashback, and it actually made me feel I was back there again. I thought it was a normal situation that will go away, only it turned out not to be the only flashback. There were more to follow. PTSD for me was the, the experience of a certain noise connected to the experience of pain. So each time I would hear uh, um, a certain noise or something loud, I would automatically have pain in my leg and get all tensed and so each time I get a bit stressed I feel it or each time I feel a bit danger I feel it. In the Bible there is a strict instruction th- 3,000 years ago that when the soldiers go back come back from the from the war before they go to their houses they go to a special uh, area for uh, three weeks Everybody. You're in the hospital, and then you go, you go home. And then you're, you've got your life, and you're pretty much on your own. It's a big jump. It's easy to surrender to the anxiety and the fears that PTSD holds within. It's easier to run away from certain situations which are everyday events, and it's all because of PTSD. I would have thought that now, if there would have been a situation where soldiers could start their life for two months, as if on their own, in some kind of a housing uh, setting, and there they could be assist and get some, some help. The Sheba Medical Center's PTSD Institute will treat the emotional wounds of warriors and citizens. Its mission is to heal the images of violence that ravage the mind, to bring those wasted by PTSD a renewed sense of purpose, and with purpose, life. Yuval was able to return to his profession and he is a leading writer on Globe's newspaper. He specializes in military technologies. Dr. Weiss leads a normal life and continues to serve as a surgeon in Sheba. Dr. Shashar returned to Sheba and is using his experience developing new medical devices. He also volunteers once a week as an OBG ultrasound expert. Oshri is now a student at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Before starting his classes, 
He walked the entire Israel Trail, more than 800 kilometers, fulfilling the promise he made to himself while in rehabilitation. To win the battle against PTSD, we need both courage and compassionate care. At Chiba's PTSD Institute, courage and compassion will bring healing and win the battle for life. <laughs>